In the 1990s, uh, there were a number of studies that were conducted uh, from northern Sweden because they had a big cluster of uh, Gauss, type 3 Gaucher disease uh, patients. And these were invariably children with massive enlargement of the liver and spleen and growth failure and, and anemia and low platelet count. And these children presented with massive protuberance of the abdomen because of these uh, uh, very large organs. In those days, in 1990s, uh, the only treatment to help the children for a short time was to take the spleen out. Unfortunately, having removed that major reservoir of this lipid-filled cells, the disease progressed more rapidly in the brain as well as in the liver, causing liver cirrhosis and fatal bleeding complications. So after removal of the spleen, there was a temporary respite with improvement of blood counts and growth, but very rapidly these children succumbed to devastating neurological damage and uh, liver disease. So that was a scenario in 1990s and uh, majority of these uh, patients sadly died uh, af after their spleens were removed and there was a very high mortality in the childhood population. So this is in many ways the most devastating form of Gaucher disease uh, and fortunately in, in the late uh, 1990s, mid 1990s, uh, enzyme replacement therapy became the standard of care. And that has been transformative after the introduction of alglucerase and imiglucerase, otherwise known as saridase and sarazine. And these children had the most transformative response literally within one or two years. And the net effect of that is that we no longer perform splenectomy in, chil in children who are severely affected. We just treat them with enzyme therapy. And so there is a large body of data that shows that these children escape childhood death and are often able to grow into adults. The problem is that the enzyme does not get into the brain and so over a period of time neurological disease can emerge. However, what is so uh, unusual about a type 3 Gaucher disease is extreme variability in how severe the neurological disease is. I have patients with the uh, neuronopathic Gaucher disease genetic variants who have grown into adults and are very high functioning individuals. At another extreme are individuals who have some neurological de 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 defect but they are functioning at a very high level with IQ as high as 140 and have an autistic spectrum disorder. The sad ex other extreme is a person who is really disabled by neurological disease, not able to take care of themselves and having uh, seizures, inability to ambulate and inability to maintain cognitive development. So this is the biggest challenge in type 3 Gaucher disease that while we can avert premature death, these individuals eventually became disabled or perish because of progressive neurological damage.